It is the first time that the IPCC has identified and shown to the world so-called long-term carbon budgets for various pathways to avoid climate change, various levels of climate change, which are indicative for governments to act or not to act. These carbon budgets are basically a recommendation what can be emitted by all sectors, by all countries in the world between now and 2050 or 2100. So it gives a clear indication, if not a recommendation, if you want to stay below two degree, you have X and Y emission allowances. However, they also point out if you do not do that one, if you just are satisfied with staying below three degree or even four degree, you have a greater amount of emissions allowances. So they put two and two together, which equals four. If you want to do that, you have those and those emissions allowances. For WWF, that is very important because it's also the first time that we have the ceiling, so to speak, of the IPCC on low carbon budgets, which WWF supports to stay well below two degree global warming and even not exceed 1.5 degree global warming, a temperature threshold WWF supports to avoid major impacts on low-lying island nations, on vulnerable nature, and on poor communities. So now we have the numbers in our hand, which governments need to use as a follow-up to allocate based on equity and fairness, based on past emissions, based on income, what are the allowances of individual nations to reduce climate change impact, to reduce emissions worldwide? So we have the scientific foundation now. What governments need to do is now to put this into a social, economic, environmental context because it's clear that not everyone on Earth will have the same allowance in the future. Poorer countries need to have more. Richer countries, which has also, also have emitted more in the past, We'll have less allowances, but that's a political task the IPCC has not looked at. But now we have the basis for governments exactly to do that.